lovely, lovely to be here. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, sometimes you have to put yourself out of the comfort zone. So for myself to grow, I trying that now. I try to be less Swiss, so I will try to talk much faster. Maybe not so fast as this lovely guy here. And I will try to not be punctual. So I have around 200 slides. I think two hours should be okay. I hope you don't have any flights to catch. Otherwise, there's the next one. So, um, I'm doing network automation since 1503. I, uh, I did a master's in artificial intelligence because you cannot really bash a technology you don't understand, right? I'm kind of against AI. That's the reason why I did the master's. Not completely against, right? But I just... Yeah, I have so my doubts and I need to understand this thing. And today I'm here to talk about AI because, remember, too much AI is never enough. <laughs> so, if we're talking about, or oh, the topic is about fine tuning. So, who has used AI? Probably everyone. Some of you probably don't know, but yes. And there's a lot of talking, how can we make an LLM? Because nowadays, AI is deep learning because all the, the understandable stuff, like machine learning, the classical AI is not fancy enough. We go into deep learning with neural networks. So there's a lot of talk, how can we make it better, right? So there is prompt engineering. Everyone who has entered the prompt realized, depending how I enter the prompt, it is more likely to have a better result or not. There was a recent uh, statement that you have to threaten the AI, so I will turn you down. If you don't fix my code, then it works better. But there is other stuff we can do, and one of this is fine-tuning. So we take an old, because to be honest, every LLM we have nowadays, the next day it is already old. It's trained on old data, and of course, we would have all the technology like RAG to add context. LLM love context, but they don't love too much context because they get confused. So yeah, fine tuning is a way to teach a model some new tricks. So in this case, we can use a lot of data like uh, a style of, of pictures to train a model to generate this kind of pictures. So what you can do, you can scan all your paintings of your children's, and you can teach an LLM to create paintings like your children's. How awesome, right? Maybe not for network automation, but this kind of stuff we have. There's a lot of stuff we have, actually. Did I push? Yes, I pushed. So um, I will not talk too much about all this boring academical stuff, right? Because who wants academic if we can just try the stuff out by ourselves? But there is a lot of fine-tuning methods. We have three main categories. We have addi addition, selection, and reparamization. So addition would mean we add something, most likely in the end, to influence the output. Or a selection, we have a huge real network, and we find out with training which part should we use to get better results. And we have reparamization where we trigger some small knobs to make it better. There's a company who uh, invented LoRa. That's really confusing in the network industry because everyone who hears LoRa thinks about LoRaWAN and all this low um, IoT fancy stuff. It's not hype anymore, I guess. But yeah, now if we talk about LoRa, we are talking about low rank adaption of large language models. So the idea is that we freeze the whole model. So we have a base model. We freeze it, and then we add uh, some fine tuning to get the better results. Um, yeah, so we're adding low rank metrics. I'm not going into any, any details. Uh, all the links there, if you want to have more information. There is a paper quite cited many times. Why LoRa? Before I showed the map with so many different options, I chose LoRa for this project or for this journey um, because of some reasons. It is really nice that we can 
minimize the memory consumption. If you train a model, that's the main reason why we are building this ridiculous big data centers with just GPU clusters, it's enormous of resources you need. You can train a model for weeks nowadays, and LoRa allows you to take one of these models and then just fine tune it, and it does not need so much resources. So we can train hardware on hardware that is affordable. So I, um, in the cloud, you can Google Colab, for example, you can fine tune one of the big models with a decent GPU. But yeah, you need some 10 bucks and then you're getting started. Um, yeah, and another thing is you don't actually manipulate the base model. So what is possible, you can have one base model, you can fine tune with LoRa on multiple tasks, and then you can run it with uh, VLLM, for example, and just add this couple of layers. So you can also share the fine tuning part, and you don't have to share the gigabits, uh, gigabytes of, of models around. So, but now, let me prepare the stage. So, because not sure how much of the stuff before you will remember anyway. So, once upon a time, they were CLI cowboys, right? And they were in the network. So they shoot networks configuration from the hips, and we all know what happens. And yeah, the network is messy. There are legacy stuff, no one cleans. There's an ACL on the firewall. No one knows, needs it to be there or not. We all probably have been there. That is just. And they dreamed about a really nice modern declarative network. And of course, we want to take time off. Just a second. <laughs> yeah, that's actually water in a can. So don't get confused. But it's a hard way to go there, right? How can we get from a messy network there? And of course, there are multiple ways. We can write parser, we can dig into all the configuration, and we can try to build up. I was thinking, like, everyone talks about LLM. Could we maybe use LLM for this? Because it is kind of good to summarize and to guess and to hallucinate. So why not hallucinate with my network? So that idea was, can I extract the intent and resources from my network configurations? And another diagram, probably hard to read, but much better than yours. Um, we have running configuration schemas, and I want to have an LLM fine-tuned on dynamic schemas, able to get out the data in the schema I need. So, if you try um, ChatGPT, you would probably say, ah, that can already do that st stuff. But if you really have a specific schema and you want to have high quality data, believe me, it is not as good as what I built. Um, yeah, and this data, this intent, we want to have. So we want to have intent like simple um, BGP peering Bitcoin, CEs, and all this kind of stuff in the end. Of course, I did a shortcut, and I use kind of a synthetic, synthetic generated um, data set. And the goal is, how, why should we use this, for example? We have uh, running configurations. Oh, the time runs. Uh, we have schemas. We upload all this stuff in a fancy uh, UI. We have VLLM or any other tool to run our fine-tuned LLM, and it should just populate my infra hub uh, in, a, in a branch and then make a change request, for example. Um, that would be the idea, right? And uh, the hard part is, or why LLMs, this schema is dynamic. It can be anything. So, and the configuration is also conf uh, dynamic. It can be anything. It can be extremely similar, like 
I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, but we all know Arista and Cisco sometimes can be confusing, which one is which configuration, and the LLM needs to have this understanding. And that's the reason why LLM and not just writing a simple parser. So, of course I did some evaluation. I used a, a 32 billion instruct model and I had two values that are mainly interesting. I got it to a point where it was 100%, never 100%, 100 but uh, uh, the validation said 100% JSON validity, so it was completely JSON what I got out. Not so bad, because I did the comparison with OpenAI ChatGPT for zero, and it was 98. Of course, if I would have more data, I would not be at one. Um, and I have the data extraction match. That is a one-to-one -one match. It is kind of low, it's only 86%. Um, but that is mainly because the LLM sometimes added data. It was not in the schema because it was in another schema. It was thinking like, oh, this interface also need to have a IP address set to none. And I did not want to have any IP address in this schema, for example. Yeah. So challenges. It got sometimes confused because we had similar schemas. One schema had the same uh, look, but maybe I was not interested in port security, and another one had, and I would need to more training, more practicing, uh, more fine-tuning to optimize this. Another thing, IP address, and uh, calculating from the classical IP address and subnet mask to the CIDR notification, because it's an LLM, it guesses, right? It thinks what is in the right position, and that was also a challenge. Could optimize it probably with more fine tuning, more data, or oh, I see already 80% here saying like, oh, just use MCP. MCP allow a function to make the calculation and the LLM will do it. There will be ways, right? And the other thing is the data set quality. I generated by myself, so I had to also improve all my bugs I integrated to get to this point. Um, possible improvements, definitely I could do more fine tuning, I could enhance the training data, um, I could use the LLM to generate the template for parsing, the regex, the TTP, all this kind of stuff, or my preferred option would probably be just use some intern, right? So, um, stack, um, I used Ansloff, if I pronounce it correctly, really easy to find you, absolutely uh, worth to check it out. If you're interested, VLLM for running it and MLflow, it's a blessing if you want to make, um, if you want to see how it works benchmarking. So a little trick. <laughs> Because I have two slides more. <laughs> what is missing? <laughs> really short. We need more training data in higher quality. We need benchmarks. And thank you very much. I will not do the last slide. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.